that is. Even now, Bushman doesn't fully understand how this works. But when he saw the photographs of the Gulf Breeze saucers, he began to wonder if they were using the same technology. You see, it starts smoking. This experimental coil is extremely dangerous and becomes very hot within seconds. But Boyd believes that explains the white glow inside the Gulf Breeze saucers, which he thinks are unmanned drones. If you modify the voltages and, and the frequencies, uh, this configuration uh, may well fly, uh, in fact, should fly perfectly well. And um, we believe that that's, that's what the people in the Gulf Breeze experiment did. So who were those people? He believes the saucers are another top secret project developed by the US military. It was probably nothing more than another branch of us. We have many, many little caveats of top, top secret areas. Uh, I've been in many of them. Uh, I did indeed stumble across this and probably did develop it. And they did indeed have it choose that area to demonstrate this technology. Uh, I, uh, they are devious and capable of doing this and worse. They've certainly been devious before. In the 1970s, there were a series of dramatic sightings of UFOs, but these were different. Many seemed to be triangular rather than circular. Speculation among the UFO spotters became frenzied. But then, this man came on the scene. His name is Jim Goodall, and he is, by day, a curator at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. But in his spare time, he does something else. I go out in the desert when I have a chance. I've been out there over the last 15 years, about 80 some odd times. Jim visits top secret aviation sites to photograph America's covert black projects. The best way to avoid being spotted is to rent a vehicle that's neutral in color. I had uh, some uh, infrared suppressive camouflage netting. I put that over the vehicle, throw some uh, sagebrush on top of it, and they look around, they don't see anything that's obvious. In 1988, Jim took a photograph of a craft that had been shrouded in the blackest secrecy for over 10 years. I had my cameras out. I heard something take off. I saw a T-38 in the air, which I, which I identified. And then over my head came an F-117. The F-117 is the stealth fighter. For over a decade, it had been flying in the skies over America. Any sightings conveniently explained away by the alien myth. I went through a 36 exposure roll of Kodachrome, and I had, I think, two frames that weren't fuzzy or, or blurred. I was shaking so much. It was one of the more exciting times of my life. My shot was this, you know, this image right here. With this photograph, Jim revealed the truth of the triangular sightings. If you look at an F-117 head on, it looks like a flying saucer. So a lot of the, a lot of, if you, if you can't identify it, it's an unidentified thing. So if, it's, if you don't know what it is and it's in the air, it's a UFO, an unidentified flying object. In the years following Jim's photograph, the flurry of triangular sightings abated, but the sightings of circular craft did not. Just last month, the Mexican Air Force released some extraordinary UFO footage shot by their pilots using infrared imagery. Bizarrely, although 11 craft could be seen, only three registered on radar. So, have the real aliens finally arrived? Or could these saucers, too, have something to do with the American military? Now, a dear, dear friend of mine was named Ben R. Rich. He replaced Kelly Johnson at the Lockheed Skunk Works. And about 10 days before he died, I was speaking to Ben. But he told me, he said, Jim, we have things out in the desert that are 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. They have about 4,500 people at the Lockheed Skunk Works. What have they been doing for the last 20 some odd years? They're building something. 
Dad, when you're out there, did you see anything? Let's not start that flying saucer nonsense again. 